I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Nova Scotia, Canada and I'm very excited to share today's video with you. It's a demonstration on two card projects that I did at my stamp club this past week and it's a fun card fold called a diorama card. Now diorama cards aren't new, they've been around for a while but maybe it's new to you. Maybe you've forgotten about this card or maybe you've been wanting to make one before just intimidated thinking it's a bit complicated but it's not and I'm going to show you two beautiful Christmas cards. So this is the first diorama card that I'm going to demonstrate for you. This uses the adorable playful penguins from our 2019-2020 holiday catalog and it's a 3D card and then it folds flat so you can tuck it in an envelope. But this is the first card that we did during our stamp club and I saved the best for last and I'm doing the same thing in today's video. So let's get stamping. Okay, so to make this card, you're going to need two pieces of cardstock and you can use cardstock or designer series paper, which is what I have here. These two pieces of real red cardstock measure eight inches in length. So these are both three and a quarter by eight. This piece measures six inches in length. So this measures three and a quarter by six. Now, what you want to do is score each piece. The two pieces that measure eight inches in length need to be scored at the two inch mark. And then of course you can just flip that around at two inches. These are already scored, but I'm just showing you. Score it at two inches or slide it over to the six inch mark. This piece, the six inch piece, you want to score at one inch on both ends. Okay, so three and a quarter by six, scored at one, and then scored at one on this end as well. So now I'm using my one and three quarter inch circle punch. These are our old style circle punches, and I'm pushing this cardstock right in as far as it'll go, and I am lining up this edge with my crease line. And then I'm just punching, and then I'm gonna slide it over, again line up this edge with the crease line and it's down as far as it'll go and punch. Okay so that's what you're going to end up with. Then you're just going to center this and punch out those two little middle bits. So now on the designer series paper I am using our one and a half inch circle punch and doing the exact same thing and I'm just going to fold it to make it a little bit easier to see the crease. Okay, push it in as far as it'll go, line up the edge with the crease, and punch. And don't forget to save these for different card projects. Slide it over, and punch. That's what it's going to look like. If you can see that. Just punch out that uh, middle part just by lining up your circle punch in the middle. Okay, well, that's what you get. Pretty easy, right? Okay, I'm going to move on to some stamping. We'll come back to these pieces in a second. Now this piece of Whisper White measures three and three quarters by three. So what I'm gonna do is turn over the reverse side and I'm just centering this piece and I'm gonna flip it back over and just trace the inside very lightly with my pencil. And this will help me guide um, for stamping the sentiment. Look at the fun stamps that I'm using today, you guys. This is called Playful Penguins. And I want to stamp the merriest wishes in the middle of this. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention is there's a thinner edge on this side and a thicker edge and I want my thicker edge down on the bottom so I can see that this is a thinner edge versus this edge here so that helps me to line it up hopefully I haven't just confused you guys okay so I'm just putting that stamp on my block and I'm using my real red ink pad And I'm just stamping it down in the center. Okay, so 
I'm going to set that aside. And now I have a piece of Whisper White and I've already gone ahead and stamped my penguins. Now what I like to do is take my basic black marker and I'm taking the fine tip journal end and I'm just going to kind of circle on their eyes just to make their eyes kind of pop out. Well, you don't want their eyes to really pop out, but you know what I mean. Okay. Now, I want to stamp three of these little scarves. So I already have that stamp on my block and I'm just using real red on this card and I'm going to stamp it three times. And then I have the little Santa hat. I'm going to stamp that once. Now I'm going to cut all of these pieces out. So I have my three cute little penguins all cut out. I have three scarves. Now I started cutting out the hat and then I remembered I want to put some of our new puff paint on this. And it's easier when you've got a little piece of paper to hang on to when you're doing that. So I'm just taking some scrap paper and our new Snowball Accents puff paint. Give it a good little shake. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the little pom-pom of the hat and a little bit down along the bottom of the hat. So I'm just squeezing out a tiny bit and this really comes out so you don't have to squeeze too much. There we go. And then I'm going to zap that with the heat tool. Okay, so now that that has all heat up and puffed up, I'm going to finish trimming that out. So I'm going to erase this pencil line and now I'm bringing in this panel that I haven't punched out and I'm going to glue that down like that. And now it's time to add some scarves. So I'm taking my fine tip glue. You can use any glue. Any glue will do and I'm just Dressing up my penguin like a little paper doll. Do you remember paper dolls? I remember paper dolls. Look, he's all dressed up for winter. Now, you could stamp the penguin directly onto the cardstock, but I want to use dimensionals for him. So I'm just going to take a couple dimensionals. That little guy is going to go on just like that. Okay, while we have the glue out, let's finish dressing these guys. Now, I wanted to keep the supplies for this card basic, and that's why I'm just using real red cardstock and real red ink. But of course, you can jazz these up however you like. I'm actually going to put the hat on the penguin in the back. Of course, they could all have little Christmas hats, but I'm just doing the one. These two are ready to go, so now we're going to move on to this piece. I'm going to take my tear and tape and Put a couple strips along each edge that has been scored. Okay, so here's how you're gonna put this on. Line up this edge with this crease. Fold that flap down, see? And then open it up all the way. Fold down this piece that crease, fold the flap down, and ta-da! Pretty easy. And then you can see that this piece is just going to go right on top. That's how easy it is, you guys. Alright, but I want to stamp my sentiment on this first, so I'm going to use Nothing Warms the Heart Quite Like a Good Friend. And again, you can see the wider edge here versus the thinner up at the top. So I've been keeping the wide side on the bottom, just like I did here. And that gives me enough room for stamping the sentiment. Okay, 
so that's ready to go but we need to put a little penguin on so again I'm using my dimensionals oops I don't need that many and I'm gonna fold his little arm because I want him his little body to go flush with that crease that way I'm not blocking out my sentiment I'm moving my dimensional because it's actually coming through where I've punched out, which means when you close the card, guess what? It's going to stick. And we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to grab this dimensional, move it down here. Let's make sure. Yep, it's not going to come through the opening. There we go. See? Pull that back in and then just line these up. And then same thing. I'm just putting this edge along the crease, folding it over. So you can use an envelope punch board to create an envelope. And right now our envelope punch boards are on our clearance rack. So you might want to grab one at a really great savings. So you can make a custom size envelope for these cards. And then you just open it up and it's beautiful. Okay, my friends, now I'm moving on to the second diorama card, and this one is stepped up. And I can't wait to show you. The girls at my club just went crazy over this. Okay, so I am using for this one the Christmas Gleaming Stamp Set, the coordinating punches that come in the bundle, and I'm also using the Everyday Label Punch. Now, I'm going to use this one instead of the circles to make the opening. So exactly the same measurements for the card scored in the same places now this time I'm going to put it in all the way just like the first one and punch and then slide it over to the crease so now I have a long opening so you see you can use different punches you can di use different dies pretty cool Oh, we need to do this piece too. So this designer series paper is also from the uh, Toil Tidings. Now I want this one to be a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do is put it in all the way and I'm putting it in the center where the folds are. I'm punching out. Now I'm just gonna move over just ever so slightly to the left and also to the right. Actually, I think this one could go a little bit more to the left. And when you've got your cardstock pushed all the way down at the bottom, you know that this is going to line up. So just like in the first card, my um, paper measures three and three quarters by three, and this is very vanilla instead of Whisper White. the sentiment which is deck the halls with boughs of holly I'm going to use my real red and garden green marker so I'm going to start with my real red and using the bold tip and going on the side rather than straight up and down I'm just swiping across now I'm taking my garden green and I'm just going in the center And this is picking up the smaller script. And I'm actually going to follow along this little doodah there. Now I'm just going to stamp this. My card is going to go this way, rather this way for a change. So I'm just going to stamp that right in the center. So I've got my green and my red. And I'm going to erase the pencil marks. Glue that down the center, like that. All right, so I have a piece of fairy vanilla and I'm going to stamp one each of the ornaments. And I'm also going to stamp the holly. 
and I'm going to stamp them all with stays on. Make sure that when you stamp your ornaments that you're going to punch out that you stamp them straight up and down so that the punches when you put them in will line up. And for the next one I'm going to use my Stamparatus and the reason being is I am using this nice bold image with the Merry Christmas and I really do want that to be nice and dark so I can stamp over and over. Big difference with this apparatus. Very, very crisp, nice and dark. So to color these, I am going to use my Aqua Painter and my Real Red and Garden Green ink pads. So I'm just squeezing the lids. Now our newer style ink pads, it's a little bit harder to get the ink on the lid. So if you want, just um, just take a block and tap the block into the ink and then pick it up that way. Okay. So I'm going to start with my berries, do this one red, now I'm going in with my garden green for the leaves and the second ornament. taking my gray granite marker and I'm just going to color in the little tops so of course I don't have a punch for the holly or the sentiment so those are gonna get cut out with our awesome paper snip scissors As I've mentioned in my other videos, when you're doing fussy cutting like this, the trick is to move your paper as well as your scissors. Now I'm putting a couple dimensionals behind this, but I'm not going to put it on my card yet. Actually, I'm going to put three. And the reason why I'm not putting it on the card yet is because I'm going to put some of our new shimmery crystal effects on the berries and I want that to dry before I put it on the card so I'm just going to squeeze some out little touches like these you guys wow they sure make a difference so this is going to dry glossy and clear and 3d ish can you see that pretty fun I'm going to set that aside to dry now we're going to add the second layer. So just like the first one, I'm adding tear tape on the two flaps. This card is so much fun, you guys. You can use diorama cards for any occasion, using any stamp set or punches or dies. Um, but they're, they're a little bit addictive, I have to tell you. All right, so I'm lining this edge up to the crease. Oops, here we go. Pull down the flap. Same thing on this side. Okay. A bit more fun with the opening here. I'm taking our Snowfall Accents Puff Paint, and I'm going to go around the edge of this opening. Now I have a fun little snowy opening for my card. So I'm going to take this and add some tear tape. So I am lining up this edge with that crease and fold the flap over and then open it up, take that edge, same thing, put it on the crease and fold the flap over. Okay, so I'm bringing in my ornaments again. 
and my fine tip glue and I'm just going to add some glue onto the ornament and then sprinkle on some dazzling diamonds. So I'm just kind of following some of the design and some of the swirls in this pretty ornament image. I already have a Stampin' Dimensional behind this so I'm just sticking it right on. And I also bent the sides just a little bit just to give it a bit of dimension. I'm just making a little knot with our 3 8 of an inch real red cotton ribbon and I'm just going to cut the tail off. Now I'm bringing back the holly and that is going to go on the inside. I went ahead and stamped the other pattern of the ornament all in real red and punched it out. I've decided I wanted another ornament on that middle section so I'm just going to add some dazzling diamonds uh, on the center of each of the little squares. Now I'm going to just close this and trim off that excess bit of ornament. Like that. To finish up this stepped up card, I want to add a paper bow on the top. So I have just some scrap strips of real red cardstock and I'm just taking my bone folder and going right across and this breaks the fibers in the paper so that it's easy to manipulate and bend. And I am going to cut some different sizes. So I'm going to have a smaller piece. I'm just measuring that, make that a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to take a glue dot, and put that on, fold that into a loop. Okay, and do the same thing here glue dot, make a loop. So you want to have, whoops, it's stuck to my finger, not the paper. There we go. So you want to have a, a small circle and a big circle. Now I'm going to take my sticky strip and put that on the bottom of the small circle, peel off the top, and then I'm going to, where it's overlapping here, I'm going to position that right on top. So I'm making a figure eight or maybe it's a snowman but now I'm going to fold them in half and pinch in the center and take my tear tape a bit off put that in the center peel off the backing and just wrap that around and now I'm going to take a little bit of that real red ribbon and just wrap it around the center just picking up a glue dot and putting that on top of the ribbon that we just folded over and then wrap that around okay so now I'm just taking my scissors and I'm folding those loops up. And I'm going to add some water and mist it so that I can actually crinkle it a little bit and give it that vintagey look. When I first showed this to the girls at my club, they actually thought this was real fabric. They could not believe it was paper. And the trick too is just to kind of like push your finger in the center and pull on the edges as well just to give it that extra dimension and then that's going to dry in shape. So I'm going to set that aside. Okay, so now I'm taking another piece of tear tape and I'm going to put that right underneath. And I know I don't have measurements for this bow. I'm just using up scraps but I will say it's half an inch wide. Now I'm putting this onto another strip of 
the real red and I'm just trimming it so it's equal pretty much on both ends and now I'm just flagging each end another piece of tear tape I want this piece to be longer than that one and then I'm going to position this Again, misting with water, and I'm going to scrunch up those two layers. Okay, so there's there's my bow. Going to stick some tear tape up on the top and position my paper ribbon right on top. And once you have it on top, you can play with it a little bit, but once it dries, especially after it's been misted, it's going to hold its shape. And guess what's last? Champagne Shimmer Mist. And there's the back of it. So there is my stepped up diorama card. Um, I know I have shadows with the lights, but you get the point. It's absolutely beautiful, so cool, and again, just folds up either way, and just make an envelope with the envelope punch board, tuck it into, um, those will have to flatten a little bit, or just give them as they are. So here's a couple other ones I made. Instead of the ornament that I tucked on the inside, I just made some more holly and put holly up at the top. And yet another one, again, just tuck some holly in around those middle bits. And then the penguins, have a few of them. And on this one, I added some of the puff paint on the bottom as well. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and have fun making some diorama cards at home. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. As always, I appreciate you. Happy stamping!